The fruit fly wants dark, dense, uh, moist, still location, like you would find a really dense tree. So to, to frustrate the fruit fly, you want to have an open, airy tree. Lots of light coming through it, lots of air movement. Um, the rule of thumb, you should, you should prune your tree enough so that a bird can fly through it without slowing down. By bird, think sparrow, not, not grapefruit. <laughs> um, the other thing about opening up your tree that way, it's also not only making an environment that's inhospitable to the fruit fly, it's also inhospitable to scale insects. So scale insects are a pest of the, of the olive tree, which damages the tree, and it's also the food source for the adult fruit fly. So a really well pruned, open, open uh, grove is going to be useful for that. After harvest, though, if you have fruit, you know, fruit, fruit fly problems, but I'm thinking a lot of that falls on the ground. Do you clean up? Yeah. So, so what, I mean, orchard sanitation is an important part of managing the fruit fly. Um, yeah, ideally you would get all that fruit out of there. Either that or disc it up and bury it. Oh, you can bury it? Yeah. I think it's maybe, well. What about chickens under there? No, I don't know about chickens. I know turkeys. We have a lot of wild turkeys, and they will come through and take olives, especially like this time of year when there's not a lot of other stuff to eat, and the olives have maybe shriveled up enough they've lost some of their bitterness. There are people that use those things, and they do certainly catch some flies. You know, I don't know if you'd have to have like a trap, one trap in every tree. I mean, I, I mean, I haven't messed around with that, but I think you'd probably they're basically local local traps. So you're going to have to have a whole lot of them in your in your grove to get some kind of management. Hot weather kills the fruit fly. How does that happen? It, the fruit flies die by dehydration. So if you have a heat spell coming, don't irrigate. You can irrigate a week ahead, you can irrigate a week after. But during the days when it's hot, you don't want any water in the grove because then the fruit flies are going to survive the heat. So, so that, that irrigation management is part of that fly management too. Like if you, I mean, the magic number we hear is 104 degrees. Um, and so I used to be, I would dread those days it was going to be and now I look forward to it because I know, okay, that's, that's a fruit fly this year. Um, but I'm also careful not to irrigate when that's going to if, there's, a, there's a disease of olive trees called olive knot, which is a bacterial disease, and it's, it's spread into like open wounds and spread by rain. If you have olive knot in your orchard or in your neighborhood, you want to delay pruning until it's dry. You're going to wait until April or May. If you don't have olive knot, you can prune whatever you want. I wanted to ask about the olive knot. So does it have other host species that you have to be careful about around uh, your orchard? Yeah, or is I, it mainly something that once you get it, it gets in there and then... You know, because it's bacterial, there's no... It's, it's, not, a fungus, it's not a fungus, it's a bacterium. So there's no oh, good okay. treatment against it except to print it out and burn it. Um, and and uh, I don't know that it has alternate hosts. Um, you would think some other thing in the, in the uh, um, uh, olive family, I don't know, Forsythia or something might, or lilac or something might be a host, but I don't, I don't know that that's the case. Uh, yes, yeah, so you want to keep it away, and that's, you know, I, when I first set up my mill years ago, and I would do custom milling for people, people would bring me olives for milling, and there'd be like a twig in there with olive knot in it, and I was just horrified, and I, I'd take that out and burn it, and I actually stopped, which was one of the reasons I stopped doing custom milling for outside people, so people were bringing me olives that had a twig that had olive knot. What's I just, it look like? It just looks like a, something like a walnut, maybe. I mean, here's a little branch coming along. It's a big, swollen, hard part. I have a picture in the in the building in the, in the organic olive book, but I think also olive knot is often um, you're you're going to see damage from mechanical harvesting um, impacting the degree to which olive knot's going to be an issue. Can, does it carry from like if you don't clean your peppers, does it carry from tree to tree? Um, I would, I would, if you, if you ha have it, I would imagine you would move it, with, you would carry it along with your clipper. Maybe not as much as a viral disease, but the other thing that can stimulate is, is, is a freeze. So if you get actually a, like a really hard freeze, you get a bunch of little cracks in the bark that can be uh, kick off a, a big infestation of olive knot, assuming it's the right. You know, summer, summer pruning of those, if you're in a wet, foggy kind of place where you probably shouldn't be growing olives anyway, but if you, if you are, um, summer pruning, the, the, the wounds are probably going to heal better than they would have in the in the winter time. So if you're concerned about you know fungus issues in your grove and and uh, um, you're in a you're in a wet place, I would try to do your pruning in a dry time of year.